Okay, welcome everyone to, well, today we're going to talk about deplatforming. This is a, a word many people don't even know, but you should be scared about it. Uh, deplatforming is when Airbnb or any other platform kicks you out. And we're going to talk about this today with Maxim from Winding Tree, a blockchain project on, uh, well, it, the focus of One in Three is about your ID, your identity on online today. Um, just a bit of um, context here. Uh, Winding Tree uh, has done an ICO about two years ago. An ICO is when you collect money through cryptocurrencies. And I participated in this ICO. Uh, I think I invested an Ether, which at the time was maybe four, five, six hundred dollars. Then it went up to $1,400, I think, and then it went down to nothing. And then now it's what, 350, 380. So that's my investment in your company. And I bought tokens from, from Winding Tree. And when Winding Tree is going to be successful, those tokens would be worth a lot. Actually, your tokens have gone up quite a lot recently. I have them on my portfolio. So I see plus plus. This is good. Um, so after this, uh, we went into crypto winter, everything looked dead. Bitcoin died for the 500th five, five, time, and then it resurrected again. And right now we are in a kind of a crypto storm. I don't know, there's been a lot of movement, a lot of price action, a lot of code developed, I would say. And the keyword for this is DeFi, decentralized finance. And um, it's a really exciting moment to be. The, the, the only disheartening thing, uh, I lost my video. I hope you can still see me. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can hear you. Okay, I lost. I can see, I can see you on the side over here. Let's see again. Oh, okay. Uh, there we are. We're back. So the only disheartening thing is the tourism. Like okay, I'm on the vacation rental space and. And, and, and Maxim, you are more in the travel space, but no one knows anything about these things. So we are just two crazy people talking about crazy stuff. That's right. What do you think? What is your take on this? Whew, you've said so many things. Uh, thank you, first of all, for supporting our project. I uh, really appreciate it. And, and yes, I myself invested into our ICO back when Ether was like $1,000 and then I was just like for six months we were just crying while Ether was going down. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what it lost 90% of its value uh, probably over the course of six months or so. But anyway, um, so you, you said our project is about identity. As of now, it, it, is, it is correct, but I just wanted to give people a little bit of um, story so i've been working on travel related startup tech i would say since 2014 and maybe a little bit more before that but really i started doing that in 2014 and i'm i'm a, a computer engineer i worked for for years in silicon valley as a software developer and when i started to work on on travel tech, I quickly realized, and I mean, immediately that for a software engineer who is accustomed to a certain speed of development, a certain level of access to all sorts of services, it's travel industry is horrible. Like it, it is years uh, in the back, like it's backwards, it's 10 years behind. And, and a lot of people in the travel industry, if you go to conferences and all the sorts of executives and stuff like that, they say it's 10 years behind, it's 20 years behind. So the number can vary, but it, it's a fact, right? So we said, what is the problem with, with the travel industry? Why is it the case that it's, it's so out of date? Uh, and it's, uh, it was, I started doing a little bit of research while working on, on one of my, uh, trial tech startups. And we came to a conclusion that centralization of, um, I would say data streams in the trial space 
is what leads to um, outdated tech and lack of innovation, high commission fees. And of course, I'm talking about this problem of big OTAs and GDSs that literally, like you don't even know as, as a, a mere mortal, as a person who maybe even loves to travel and goes places all the time, you're not aware that uh, every time you book a hotel on booking.com, you pay 20% commission fee to booking.com. Uh, maybe 25 sometimes. They're, again, numbers can vary. It could be maybe as low as 5 or 10 and up to 25. And again, when you book an airline ticket, the same problem. You pay uh, a hefty commission fee. Um, and all those companies that sit in the middle, they take this rent, they do not necessarily provide a great service to you. And, and in some cases, in many cases, and that's what we keep hearing from hotels, um, how companies like Expedia, well, they introduce all sorts of inefficiencies into this whole transaction, right? So, so you're saying okay, so that the inefficiencies we... are there because they allow these companies to make money? Absolutely. It is true. It is true, and and they take that rent. I mean, I mean that's how it works today. You know, they are able to collect that rent because they do provide hotels with business. But the problem is, I don't have a problem with companies that bring business to you. Absolutely not. Uh, it, the internet is full of stories, though, about how it's not just about providing business. I, I mean, it's it's a classical monopoly situation, you know. Can you very easily switch from one provider to another if you're a hotel? Not really. Can you, as an airline, can you change your GDS to another very easily? There is no competition, right? So I'm not against travel agencies. I'm not against companies who can who who genuinely help other companies in the space to get more business, make more money, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. No, I'm all for it, but I'm for healthy competition. So basically we created Winding Tree to have a healthy competition in, in the market, right? Okay. And the idea is that we have, what is travel? It's a two-sided marketplace. On one hand, you have all those suppliers, it's your hotels, it's your airlines, it's your maybe vacation rentals and car rentals, whatever you want, right? And on the other side, uh, and this is a B2B marketplace, on the other side of the marketplace, we have travel agencies, right? That can combine all those things together. Or maybe it's an online travel agency. Maybe it's just a website that, well, very simply combines an airline ticket and a hotel when you go somewhere, right? Which probably you, you do need both most of the time when, whenever you travel. Um, so we're thinking, okay, so we're building this platform basically so that there's not just Expedia and Priceline, two companies that you cannot actually, you know, switch back and forth one from another uh, very easily. And therefore you're in sort of monopolistic situation where they completely control you and they can tell you, well, yesterday was 20%, today's 25%. What can you do? Nothing, deal with it, right? So we're saying, well, what if there was a thousand travel agencies on this side competing with each other uh, per, and competing for the users and uh, competing not on price? And uh, they do that. They do compete on price by squeezing out the hotel. So basically the hotel is that's not the guy that's suffering. But compete on features, compete on services, you know, provide a better service, provide, you know, uh, more content or something like that. But anyway, so that's that's the whole premise of creating Winding Tree. And the way we do that is we're, re we're realizing, okay, we're creating a decentralized marketplace. So we're not recreating Expedia, right? We're not taking the same model and doing some something stupid on the blockchain just for the sake of saying, hey, we're using blockchain for that kind of stuff. We are doing it because we're using the blockchain because we don't want to be in control of this whole platform because there's an inherent 
the risk that let's say a company is acquired and software is acquired or something like that and the new owner I'm, I'm going to have to interrupt you, Max, because sure. I've been going around uh, Italy and, and, and Europe uh, for the last two years trying to explain these very concepts. Yeah. And uh, I failed mostly because uh, they are theoretical. So it's very clear what you're telling to me. Yeah. Uh, it's probably not clear to our attendees. And uh, I prefer to go to specific cases and today we're going to talk about deplatforming and and i'm going to ask you how he, how what you're doing can solve this problem so we're going to see what the problem is and then how your yours is the solution is that okay with you yeah absolutely let's do it great so uh, first of all before um th there was supposed to be another person um robertine nunez he couldn't make it so i apologize to our attendees today uh, you can actually uh, from tomorrow you can see him and others in the book direct show which is going online for a couple of days, I think. So um, please, please listen to the book direct show if you're interested in uh, in any any vacation rental direct booking um, discussion. And I also have one panel. Uh, sorry, one one presentation there. So uh, let me start with uh, a concept which is probably familiar to you, but not to everybody, which is digital neo feudalism. Do you know what I'm talking about, right? Or no? You okay, so you were listening to me in Milan when we met. <laughs> the, my presentation was about that, but basically, and there's a very interesting concept, and you already touched it at the beginning. Is that uh, the, if you see the internet as a new continent, like the the last continent discovered by humankind, you realize quickly that it's the only one where the rule of law is not applied at all. So, and we are in a more feudalistic situation. Silicon Valley, where you worked, is the center of it. So what is feudalism? Is kings who own the gold and the land, right? And then they give this land to the lords and say, take care of the land, uh, give me people for wars, have people grow food and give me a part of it, right? And the lords, they give to the serfs uh, the possibility to work the land and in exchange, they want their sons for war and parts of the, uh, the, the, the food they grow for themselves, right? So it's a system. It works like kings, lords, and, uh, and serfs. Um, the, the difference between today's situation is that serfs have zero rights. Why today, if you are a farmer, you have a contract which tells you this land is being uh, purchased, it belongs to me, or it's being rented, right? This is the rule of law. Uh, if you have a piece of land in Prague, the president cannot come and take it away from you if you have a piece of law, right? So we don't have this on the internet. Today, if you are an Airbnb host, you are literally a serf because you have the investors who are the kings. They have the gold. They give the gold to the entrepreneurs. They give the gold to Airbnb. They build a land, and Airbnb is a land where people work on top of it. You're a host. You're working Airbnb's land. And as long as everything goes well, it's fine. You make your money. You give them part of your money, of your earnings, 15%. And, and everybody's happy. But then one day, the Lord comes into your house and kicks you out for whatever reason. And that's the platforming. They kick you out of your Airbnb listing. You lose all your listings, sorry, of your Airbnb account. You, you, you lose all your listings, all your customers, all your bookings, and all your reviews, right? And there's no way you can go to a, a, a judge and say, well, I had rights because you have no rights. Okay, today it happened, and I passed the link before in Prague. Yeah. Yeah. This guy was a property manager, I suppose. He's been working with Airbnb for years. He's probably feeding his family out of this. He gets a letter from Airbnb. We, we close your account, and they won't tell him why. He's out. His business is destroyed. And there's no judge in Prague who's going to save him because Airbnb is on another continent where there is no rule of law. Right? This is the platforming. I don't know how many people are aware of this, but more and more are getting aware of this because this is happening more and more, 
right? So that's that's the platforming for us. That's the discussion we're going to have today. Now, my question for you is what you're doing, especially with Org ID, right? How can you? How are you going to solve this problem, or are you going to solve this problem in a way, or or more generally, how do you see the blockchain can solve these problems? So, so you you really started with this kind of high level philosophical, and, and, and you know you started calling names new new federalism. It's interesting, yeah. and. On from this high level, from this perspective, what you have to do, if you just think about it, what do you have to do to avoid this kind of situation? Uh, if you again, if it's 400 years ago, or 1600, if it's if it's in that uh, time period, if if it's feudalism, well, you have to have your own piece of land. There right? you are. Yeah, there you are. That's it. And and you have to have some sort of tools to protect that piece of land from from others if you if they want to take it right yeah and that's exactly that's exactly what org id is right so we're saying here is go ahead and create your own piece of land and here are all the tools that allow you to protect it no one can take it from you if you follow the best practices if you don't give your password to some sort of hacker somewhere right so that's 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 it so what what is the difference between creating an account on somebody somebody else's land like on airbnb booking expedia or whatever and doing this on the blockchain could you explain this to people who are not have not really been exposed to this concept yet which right. are i would say 90 percent of people in travel so I'm going to pr probably use a very simple analogy. So you could go ahead and whatever the company you have, or or maybe you could create your own personal website using one of those website builders, right? So you create an account, it's a login and a password. Um, but again, you, you are creating, you're building something on a plot of land that belongs to someone else, which basically means that they can keep, kick you out anytime they want. Or they can, again, maybe you've built something that's really lucrative and amazing. Uh, maybe they can, I don't know, do something to you because now that piece of land or, or something that you build on that piece of land is very valuable. So, but basically the problem is they can kick you out as, as Lucas said, right? Um, another way of doing that, of, of achieving whatever you wanted to achieve is not to build on someone else's land, but to have your own land, which means have your own server, put your website on your own server, connect it to the internet, uh, make sure that that server is located somewhere where no one else can physically access it, protect it, and that's it. Your website will never go down. Of course, there is now a question of whether whatever you're doing is legal in that location in the country that, where you're operating. So maybe, yes, the government can come and seize your servers because you're doing some crazy stuff. So uh, that for me. But if you're doing some legal things, put it on your own server. It will never go down. You have complete control over it. But in this case, you have to you should be able to step up and, and f first of all, protect your server physically, protect your server and website virtually, which is not a trivial task, right? So you have to know about firewalls and cybersecurity and, and all sorts of hacks and install updates and, and all of that, right? So that your, your precious website is not subverted online. Right. So, and there's, that's fundamentally this, this trade off. It's incredibly easy to build something on someone else's piece of land. They give you all the tools. They, they, they make it very, very nice and, and easy. Right. But the downside is they can kick you out. Another one, another, the, the alternative is have your own piece of land. 
take care of your own house. Much harder to do, but there are no downsides such as, you know, someone can come and kick you out. So, right? so, so yeah. yeah, let me inject something here. What you're describing with, be, you know, build your piece of land, like your own website is exactly where the industry is going through right now. Everybody wants to have their own booking website yeah. and get direct bookings. Makes so that's sense. where we are today. After the pandemic, that's that's the focus. Yeah. Because people realize that being on somebody else's land is not good. Yeah. Let's do our own piece of land. What is the next step? The next step is if so many people have the same goal, how about we all get together and say, so what are the best practices? Right. So one guy would come and, and we have a conference and the guy would say, hey, I tried this and this and this. I got hacked. Don't do that. Right. Which what I'm talking about is open source. Right. There are best practices. There are communities that are saying here is a tool and it's a free tool that you can use to create your own website very easily. It will be safe. It will be protected as much as it can be. Uh, of course, there's no guarantee. Maybe you do some crazy stuff and you get hacked, whatever, right? But 99.8% probably you're gonna be safe, right? And of course, again, people in the travel industry, I, I don't know if, if we can ask people here, people who are listening, people maybe who are gonna watch it later, you know, how, how many people know about open source, what open source is about. But that's precisely this thing. We have probably thousands of people who are aligned around the same goal. We don't want to build on other people's land. What do we do? At Winding Tree, we're saying, guys, let's work together. And we created these tools that are open, that are open source, that are completely transparent. Uh, there is assurance, again, nonetheless, we created those tools, but nonetheless, we don't have control over those tools. It's not our land. We are, we have created peak axes and shovels and, and other tools that you can use to build your own, to, to fence your own land, to build your own little house. Uh, and, and guess what? We have an unlimited number of pickaxes and shovels. So you're tool. telling me, and this is where it's hard to explain to people yeah. who have been not exposed to these crazy ideas of the blockchain. <laughs> you're telling me that if I use, if I build my own website with your tools, and I suppose other people's tools too, because I'm gonna, it's open source, right? Sure. You can't kick me out. You cannot deplatform de me. You don't have yeah, that power. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's not our land. Um, it's not our land. It's it's your own land. And if we if we continue with this analogy, I've never done this before. I've never I've been, and thank you for this. Uh, you can very easily get your own little piece of land on this thing that's called blockchain, and you have to pay for it. It's not free, you know. But again, with the website that you create and put on your own server, that's you also pay. not free. You have to pay for the hardware. You have to pay for the internet connection. It's not free. You have to invest your source. On the blockchain, it's kind of the same concept. Uh, you have to spend a certain amount of this virtual cryptocurrency in order to get your own piece of land, in order to get your own sort of domain name, your identity, right? But once you got it, no one can take it from you. And and it's this, that is a crazy concept as to, you know, why is it the case that when I have something on the blockchain, no one can take it from me? That's that's much harder to explain. Difficult, yeah. But, but well, if the one way I explain this is the Barbara Streisand effect, which is something completely different, but the kind points in the right, in the right direction. So Barbara Streisand had uh, a picture taken of her villa in Malibu, somebody you know from the helicopter, and published on the internet. And she she got angry with the internet and told the internet to remove the picture. And what the result was that there were a million more pictures, and these pictures cannot be removed from the internet. So this is the concept of decentralizing data. 
uh, in the same way as Barbara Streisand cannot take away this picture from the internet, uh, people cannot take away your own identity from the blockchain. It's completely different. The example is not technically correct, but it, it points in that direction. Um, so yeah, it's basically because my rep, my ID is not in your servers, is not on my servers, is on a 5,000 computer network where no one can, unless all the 5,000 computers agree to turn it off, and they will destroy their whole business and livelihood, nobody can cancel it except yourself, except the person right. who has yeah. the, the password with the keys, right? It's an okay analogy, Luca. Okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to really, um, you know, if, if these things are not understood, then everything else doesn't make sense. So, I completely yeah. agree. And, yeah. you know, over, over these years, I've used so many analogies and like and this and that and Internet. And, and that. But let's do let's do a very concrete example here and go back to I opened my account in Airbnb in 2010. I worked 10 years. I had 5000 reviews and now my account is shut down and I lost everything. Right. Uh, suppose the same things happens, like I open my account in a decentralized OTA, yeah. winding tree, um, org ID, whatever. 10 years pass and winding tree wants to close my account. They can't, right? They can't. There's so no for no the way. first time, this land what I'm working on is my, is my own asset. As, as, a, as a result, my reviews are my are an asset. So let's talk about reviews. When you lose your reviews on on Airbnb, you lose you lose something which has never been on your asset. Even if you were convinced that these reviews were your own asset, right? Yeah. Why the reviews on on Winding Tree or on the blockchain in general, they are your own asset. It's a, it's a completely different paradigm. It changes everything. Is that correct? Is does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. It makes it. it it's to me, it made sense three years ago, you know? Right. <laughs> to me, to me too. Um, well, even, even, even longer. And it, everything, for, for who's listening, everything starts from Bitcoin. The, the, the thing that money, sh money, we are used to have money issued by the government, but as a constant, money is not issued by governments. It, it's an agreement we have as human beings to have something scarce, scarce which you can use as a, as a mean of exchange. It, it, Everything at the beginning is, it wasn't explained to us, right? We always think that everything has to come from above. Uh, salvation has to come from the church. Money has to come from the government, right? So we are so hardwired in this. It is hard to go like, okay, networks can take care of this better than any centralized organization. So it's really hard to, to understand. So let, let's go very co completely here. Um, I because you showed me before this, this this meeting, right? I can create an account, let's call it account, on Winding Tree. Right. And I can verify my Twitter, my, um, what do you have, LinkedIn, my website. So I can prove that this belongs to me. And now I have an identity which I only control. Winding Tree only gave me the code, which is open source code to do it. And yeah, cannot so stop. let me give you the tools. Okay, so how it works. I mean, we use Ethereum, right? And Ethereum, we have nothing to do with that project. It's, a, it's, it's the separate, that's the blockchain we're using and it's running. We're only using it. And all we did with, with this project is we created an interface on top of it. And, and it, in reality, it's, it's Ethereum that provides this very, very unique, property of a database so basically it's a database where you own your own record you put maybe something we, maybe you could also oh sorry sorry yeah. maybe you could also explain what the ipfs is that's also very exciting ipfs yeah 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 also very cool technology that that we're using in the parts of, of well, what would you, how would you explain it to somebody non-technical so IPFS is basically, you know, there is a very good uh, example in, in the hotel space, space in particular. So, for example, I mean, we're doing all sorts of crazy things in the travel space and we are 
we have connected to Amadeus, the, the GDS part of the Amadeus, to get the hotel content. Um, we're playing with all sorts of things. And, and guess what? The, the pictures from the GDS, pictures of hotels, each hotel only has one picture that is roughly 100 by 100 pixels, which is, in today's day and age, it's not even an icon. They were saving money, basically, because they I had no incentive. What the what is the logic? So I don't know what they did. Maybe I mean, probably was built like ten years ago, or maybe okay. more years ago, and that's the capacity that they had, and they never got to update this. So in the hotel space, in order for you to well, actually, to have quality pictures on your travel agency website or something that you actually have to go and have a contract with another company. And there are a few companies that provide this kind of service. All they do, all they give to you is pictures of hotels <laughs> that you Isn't already it? have access to oh. through Amadeus. But without this new contract, you cannot do anything because no one's going to buy anything off of you if you don't have good pictures. But we are thinking internally with the team uh, we could use IPFS, and basically IPFS is the same idea. It's not one company, it's not one big computer that has all the hotel pictures. It's thousands of computers. Would you like to participate in that network and, and give this network a part of your computer's bandwidth and processor power and, and storage? You can, and that's how the this, this system works, right? So basically, those images are not just stored in one computer, they're stored in multiple computers, and you can access them uh, at any time virtually for free. And why is it, why is this an optimization? Why is this progress? Because again, there's no monopoly anymore, right? So all of those thousands of computers are competing to serve certain kind of content, and therefore they have competitive pricing. Um, very, very interesting project. And we, we actually are thinking about, again, if we create an open source tool, another tool, because we created a bunch already, we give it to hotels and we're saying, hey, if every, not every, if every hundred hotel install this application, put, put it on one of their servers, and it's, it's a piece of land in a sense, right? we wouldn't have that problem. All the hotel images will be available for everyone virtually for free. There is, so you know, the, the, an example will be when I upload my picture in Booking, it, it's on Booking servers, Booking can shut it down. Absolutely. If I upload it on my own server, great, but I have to keep my server up. Yeah. I can upload in IPFS, this picture gets broken in a thousand pieces and goes on 10,000 computers. And when somebody wants to see it, it's just put together quickly. Exactly. And it's, yeah. and it's, it's, it's out there. It's a bit like a movie on Torrent, is it? Yeah, yeah. Very so good it, point. It, but it, I don't it, think it's a good analogy. People will be saying, ooh, Torrent, it's illegal now. It's illegal, yeah. <laughs> I, I see Ted, Ted Miller is trying to write, uh, but the message doesn't arrive. I hope there's no technical problem, Ted. Um, we're here. If you want to say something, go ahead, yeah? Okay. Um, all right. So, oh, okay. That was a long message. That's why. L let me see what Ted says. Okay. So, my partners and I created the first API the OMA way pulled from in 2004, the US, for our property management clients, 250,000 properties. Amazing. We were able to, because we had several uh, reservation softwares critical to our clients controlling the last mile of connectivity. We need to move to a next generation, which you're both saying. In uh, short-term rentals, I think the key to achieve scale with blockchain is to have the individual property owner own control the components of the property. Property details, images, reviews, availability, pricing, book direct site, etc. Yeah. Once on the blockchain in this form, a new round of tech could be developed replacing, uh, replacing existing reservation software service providers and be pulled via the major OTAs and long tail distribution. 
Ted, were Amazing. you lurking on our website or something? Why did you copy our text and, and put it here? Uh, this is exactly you mean. <laughs> so, so that's exactly what we were discussing literally yeah. just before the call with Luca. Yeah. That you saying, and that's exactly what you're saying. That's you're controlling all of these different uh, property details. That's exactly what Winding Tree provides, right? That's your identity, the identity of your business. That's the name of it. That's the location. That's some some details about it. The pictures. Of course, you have to control all of that. Like, why would you give up that control? Give it to someone else. Uh, uh, yeah. And with Winding Tree or at Winding Tree, what we've already built is the layers of uh, this new tech that you're talking about on top of that, right? So we already have, I'm going to put it in the chat. And and this is very, very uh, early, but th there is Glider Travel, which is, it's an online travel agency that we've built. The difference is that it's completely open source, right? And maybe it looks like, it doesn't look like it's the best travel agency out there for now, but it's open source. Do you want to, like, again, let's collaborate, let's participate, let's let's use all of those best practices. Um, with Glider, what we try to show is that how easy it is to create travel agencies on top of our network. And anyone can take the source code of travel, of Glider travel and create their own OTA. More than that, right now we are working on a project that would give hotels and we haven't talked with the team. Well, we discussed it with the team. We haven't had uh, a planned this functionality yet, but I don't see a big difference between let's say a small hotel that has 20 rooms and a, a vacation rental manager that has 20 properties that are roughly in the same location. It's the same, right? So we are creating open source software for this kind of uh, organizations. And it's going to be, well, first of all, it's going to be open source. Second of all, we're going to host our own version of that software that will will be available for very very cheap. Um, and you know we looked at all the software that's available now there. It's hundreds and hundreds of euro per month, even if you're a small hotel. That's ridiculous. We want to have it available to make it available for twenty bucks a month. That's all you need to host the amount of informa information. And we'll be using all those crazy things, blockchains, the IPFS, to optimize all of that to cut the costs. And it's entirely doable uh, already today. Have you been following DeFi? I suppose so. I not too much, you know, okay. a little bit. Okay, uh, for for our listeners, DeFi is decentralized finance, um, which seems completely unrelated. Uh, it's what's happening now on the blockchain. Um, it's all about lending and earning interest and stuff like this. But the, the really cool part is that we are seeing projects popping up from nothing simply by getting pieces of code because everything is open source, right? So uh, if I want to do a, an alternative to booking, I cannot go to booking and say, give me your code, right? They are silos, they are closed. So I have to start over and no investor will ever give me $10 billion to do that, right? So, but in, in open source blockchain, everything is there. So you see a company is doing something and then another company is taking the same code and they can do that. That's the, the basic agreement we have in open source. Take my code, fork it, do your own thing. We're gonna all be stronger because of that. So people take a piece of this company for the decentralized exchange. So for, for a software to exchange money. Uh, a piece from this company for the governance, a piece for this company for something else. And in a week, they put together a project, which is the sum of all the other projects, and they launch a token. And the token is interesting for the investors. So people start buying the token and put money. And they launch a Discord server. So people start discussing. And I've seen, 
I've seen projects starting from zero and getting to a billion dollars in value, not in volume, sorry, in, in uh, uh, well, let's say in money transacted in a week, right? And, uh, and that's the concept of Lego, like you, we're building the blocks. So Max is building some blocks, somebody else other blocks. And maybe one day somebody comes and puts them together in an OTA, and then somebody else is going to take the same blocks and make a slightly different OTA. So what Max is building is not for himself. It's not code they keep for themselves. It's for, for everybody. Okay. And the, the, the tweet which really cemented my idea on this was a couple of days ago. And they said, short silos, long networks. Once network effects kick in, and it may be funny to hear that today, now this is in 2020, Airbnb booking is speed that they have no chance, zero. There's no way they're gonna be able to, to produce that kind of code that fast and experiment in so many ways, in parallel ways to bring value to the market. There's no way. They are already on the defensive um, because of the pandemic, but give it a few years, if everything goes well in blockchain, they will look like uh, kind of dying dinosaurs. And we, we are starting to see this with Coinbase. Have you seen that um, Uniswap, as, which is a decentralized exchange, has yep. gone over Coinbase, which is a centralized exchange with billions of dollars yep. in, in a matter of months? Uh, in June, Uni, okay, just for, for the listeners, Uniswap is a place where you take your Ether and exchange it for maybe Leaf, which is the token of Maxim, of other, other, other cryptocurrencies, right? And you do this interacting with a crypto, with a, with a protocol, not with a company. It's just there, right? Um, and Coinbase is, a, is an exchange, like a bank. You send your Bitcoin and you can exchange them for Ether and whatever. So for many years, Bit, uh, crypt, and Coinbase was the biggest. Uh, it's worth billions, right? Uniswap had 20 million of liquidity in June, and then it has 2 billion today. I mean, once the network effects kick in, once a protocol makes sense, it's, it's, it's game over. That's my opinion. So, yeah. and, and I like following DeFi because I see this happening in a couple of years in travel. And I'm just there waiting for this to happen. This so is gonna be so this is exactly the moment that we are prophesizing in travel, you know, like we need a moment like that. And, but in order for us to arrive to that moment, as you said, we have to have those building blocks, which yeah. today in travel, they almost don't exist. I mean, the only other open source project in the travel space that I know of is yours. There's nothing else. I've never, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I didn't do my research, but there is nothing that's open source. There's yeah. a lot of hybrids. People who say, okay, this is gonna take too long. So let's do an OTA, which is partially blockchain, partially open, and the rest centralized. Because decentralizing, as of course you know very well, has a cost. Things are more difficult, right? Yeah. So you have uh, Travala.com, you have uh, Locktrip.com. Yeah. Uh, they are trying to solve the problem today why we with the open source approach uh, we're trying to solve the problem when it can when it can be solved basically I, I really don't understand what kind of problem they're solving today though they're solving a different problem that's i don't think um uh, do, do they because uh, well you, you, you can see? sometimes save money on on bookings i booked on love trip uh a hotel in Florence and it costed me 13% less because they don't get commission. Uh, but then I, I've done a research recently with both of them and I would say it's a hit and miss. Sometimes it is more expensive, sometimes it's the same, sometimes it's cheaper. Yeah. Uh, it's still much more comfortable to use Booking.com, of course, today. Um, so it's, it's not, well, I know where they come I mean, from. They, yeah. I, I know, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Like I know that both those projects are simply using the incumbents infrastructure, the infrastructure yeah. of, I don't know, booking.com and they're yeah. paying those commission yes. fees and yes. stuff. And yes. if there is no commission fee that they, therefore 
they're subsidizing it somehow, or like I I don't know what the games that, that they're playing there, but like it's all the same. I mean, there are many other travel agencies that have done exactly the same. Yeah, and and I, I don't know enough the hotel industry to really understand what happens. I think that Booking.com was in difficult in difficulty, and they said, okay, here you are some uh, inventory, and they are kind of reselling it. And, in a different market with some token incentive, etc. But this is not real, uh, in my opinion. That's not the solution. The solution must be much more disrupting. To their defense, and especially Lock Trip, which I know personally, but I don't know Travala, it's a process. Like we decided to go decentralized round, yeah. from the from the beginning. They they say, okay, let's start what we can do and we're gonna decentralize later. We don't know who's gonna bring solutions so i mean it's good it's experiments all of us i, I completely agree i completely agree experimentation yeah. is is that's what we need and that's what that's another point that's another thing that we want to have in the trial space because innovation is equal to experimentation it's just yeah. you know how many of those as you're saying hits and misses uh can we have if it's 10 then you have this rate of progress. If it's a hundred, then it's slightly bigger. If it's a thousand, well, like we should be able to experiment. We should be able to create those companies fast. We should be able to to create all, exactly like we do in the in the blockchain space right now, where as you're saying, those projects are being created at insane rates and. At the same time, you know, many of them fail very, very fast, but that's fine. That's totally fine because those, the genuine ones are, are going to survive, are going to be good, but we have to spend and expand our energy on, on that kind of experimentation. And you, of course, you know, there is no illusion. Th that's, it's in the name. It's startup. What is a startup? It's an experiment. Yeah, if you but, found yeah. a scalable business model, it's not a startup anymore. The biggest difference with the classic startup, Silicon Valley startup, is that they, you know, they sit down, they write code, and then they shut down, and the code is gone mostly. Some of them open source it, right? Uh, whatever we are doing is going to be there. It's in GitHub today, right? So if any blockchain project fails, uh, they they just push the the whole ecosystem a bit farther. They failed. I mean, the company dies but people don't die right so they're going to go around doing other things so everything is moving ahead uh, much faster than startups in a way because if you have those startups competing on the i don't know scooter space startup fails whatever they did is gone i mean yeah we can learn a little bit from them but they don't leave back to the community the code or we don't see what happening you know internally how the money went around we we lose all this very important data for our experiment, for our lab laboratory. Right? But in blockchain, it, it's by default open source. So that's why it's uh, in the long term, I think it's much more powerful than the classic startup. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree. It's, it's, it's a black hole in those well, what should do? What should, what should somebody like today do? Somebody from the vacation rental or travel industry say, okay, guys, interesting what you're saying. Can I do something? Uh, what, what can I do with one in three? That's that's a really, really, it's a million dollar question. So we're still trying our problem today. And, you know, I'm being completely open and completely honest. We're going this decentralized route that by definition is, it's harder, right? I mean, today you can go, you can register on, on booking.com, on Expedia, uh, and, and they will bring you business. And that's, that's great. You know, in and of itself, it's amazing. And if it works for you, continue doing that. For many folks, it doesn't work. They're saying the commissions, uh, uh, commission fees are very high. Again, there's the, platform, the problem of deplatforming. And if we're talking about Airbnb, uh, you know, I, I remember that I was reading an article and it's not just about the hosts, it's also about guests. Guests, guests are being deplatformed from Airbnb and kicked out without uh, even an opportunity to to be allowed back in their lifetime potentially. You know, so I've read stories about that. So those are the problems. So we created 
this identity system for, and we're targeting travel companies as of now, right? So basically the idea is that you can come, you can have your own piece of land, you can build on top of that, um, whatever the product, or you can offer your product standing on your own piece of land that no one can take from you. But the way you have to offer that product on our platform is that, let's say your hotel, the last step of our registration process is we're saying, okay, hotel, great. So you gave us all of your information. How can travel agencies book your rooms for their customers now? In other words, give us your API and Probably people who are watching this, they understand what an API is. For, for many people probably in the travel industry, most of them understand what an API is. But providing an API on an automated platform like this, you know, as a hotelier, if I was a hotel manager or general manager or something, I wouldn't be able to do that. I simply don't have the technical capacity to do that. Um, if these companies are using platforms or property management systems like Oracle, we're integrating with those companies um, and you should have a very easy solution to this very, very soon. Not, not yet, it's not available yet. And unfortunately, and it's, it's baffling me every time I encounter a hotel that's managing their stuff in an Excel spreadsheet, or maybe in some cases even with a paper. pen and piece of paper, right? So for those, we are, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're building open source tools for them so they don't have to do that. And, and I personally promise it's gonna be extremely cheap, extremely affordable, usable, uh, it's going to be, be a, a modern application that's very easy to use. And through that, we are planning to bridge basically this product market fit conundrum. Through that, we were planning to obtain inventory from the small people, for, from small companies, small organizations, small hotels. Um, and, and again, it will be one button where they're going to say, I want to receive bookings through Winding Tree Channel automatically into my what we call an inventory management system because pms is an acronym it has to die sorry <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what ted says he says the open source and blockchain tech needs to be also focused on the lower building on the lower building blocks like replacing reservation software and api uh, where the data currently resides and is being pulled from uh, an individual a uh, shorter rental owner, tech needs to be very simple to be adopted. I, I definitely agree. I, exactly, absolutely. I, I, the, the building block thing, um, I was talking before to, to Max, um, uh, I, I basically gave up on trying to come on the market with a full-fledged uh, OTA, which is as good as Airbnb, soon, okay? It's not gonna happen before two or three years at least, okay? But what we can do today is provide single softwares, let's say, single software, which can solve problems and uh, those building blocks, right? So Max is working on uh, protect your ID, have your own ID, your own piece of land in a metaphor. And we're thinking about, for instance, reviews. And we have this project called Open Reviews, which I find really powerful and which is we have all of us have thousands of reviews on, on the OTAs and they are siloed in the OTAs. I, we can't get them out. But what if you could get them out, so scrape them from these websites, forget if it's legal or not for the moment. So you get this, this, the, your own reviews and you put them on the blockchain through a protocol which doesn't allow you to, to fake them, right? To remove the bad ones. So you, you put your Airbnb URL in a protocol, like on a website, basically. You click a button, you pay the gas, and then some script takes all your reviews and writes them on the blockchain, which means Ethereum plus IPFS. 
And now your blog, your reviews have been liberated from the silos. It's like a guerrilla thing, right? But it's your own reviews. And then you can use them in your own website. And people will know that these are real reviews from, from real customers. And, uh, and there you have, your website now has the trust issue solved because when I want to book directly, I only, in a website, normally I find these testimonials which say this is the best hotel in the world. Right, and I don't, tr don't believe them, of course, because they've been like you know selected. But if I find the same reviews which were on booking on your website, and I know this this has not been tampered with, then I don't need to go on booking anymore. Right, so that's another building block, taking the reputation from Web two to Web three. And we have this idea, this project. We are raising a bit of money through Gitcoin, and we see if we can do it. And this is a protocol which for you is clear what it is, but for many people it's not. It's a software we throw on Ethereum and we can't touch anymore. This is very hard to understand for people. It's like creating a new seed for tomatoes, giving it to the world and you can't take it back. It's there. Yeah. You wanna do a new one, you have, you have to do a new one, but you can't change the old one, right? You lose control. And then maybe a government comes and say, you can't do that. Say, I can't stop it. It's, it's out there, right? Mm -hmm. So there are, these are the building blocks we have to build. And that will be a solution today. Tomorrow morning, people will start using it. And they will say it because today, anybody who is on any OTA is at risk of losing the whole reputation they built in 10 years in Airbnb. Today is at risk. Tomorrow, we give you this tool. It's not a risk anymore. It's huge, in my opinion. Well, it, so. it is huge, but I think also about the risk it's under risks and it's, it's this problem of big companies surviving and small companies. I, I mean, how many small companies are, are suffering right now, laying people off, shutting down? Oh, I lost the battery. I don't know if you hear me, but you lost the battery or you've been censored by an OTA. Okay. Anyway, uh, the time is gone. It's finished. Um, let's see if Max com comes back. Uh, basically, the idea here is uh, about the platforming that we need to take our identity out of these companies and put it on the blockchain, which means on the internet. And then we own it. That's the whole idea. How we get there? Well, we get there slowly. It's going to take time, but this is the the, the direction everything is uh, is taking. Okay. Um, well, we have a couple of minutes. Uh, there is the book direct show tomorrow. Um, go and check it if you think it's, it's, it's interesting or relevant to you. And uh, yeah, and there you are. I got Max. Let's see. He's back. Okay. Max, let's see if you can go back. I see you now. There you are. Okay, perfect. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yeah. No yeah, problem. no, I was talking about the problem of, and let me see if I can turn on my my laptop camera. Should oh, the battery of the camera is going. Okay. Oh, yeah, there the you go. The battery of the camera is it's oh. overheated or, or okay. oh, exhausted, maybe. Oh, you got colors now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I was talking about the problem of uh, how these big companies, you know, small companies were paying for a long, long time, all of those high commission fees for years now. And those big companies are, well, of course they're suffering, uh, but I think they have big, you know, coffers with lots and lots of money to survive in the long run. Small companies that were, were, were paying those landlords and lords, all those tributes for all these years, they are literally dying. I mean, in terms of companies, companies are shutting down and, and laying people off and stuff like that. So I don't think that's scalable. And uh, the problem is, is this thinking that people, whenever things are going fine and travel is slowly by steadily it, it it was increasing you know maybe two percent maybe five percent year over year uh and things were 
doing okay and people are making money, but no one is planning for the crisis ever for some reason, right? And no, we will have those things and, and we have to plan uh, you know, how our businesses are going to work in a sustainable way. Yes, there will be another crisis in 10 years. It's going to be related to something completely different, to some alien invasion or something like that. But it's going to be here. How are we going to overcome this so that we don't, so, so that we survive and not just big companies that, that survive, you know? So that's that's my vision too. But along the same lines and, and the result is the same. We have to adopt this decentralized technologies. We have to learn how to use these tools that are there, are out there for free. That And you can use those free tools to, to build your own piece of land and, and to be your own master, basically. So yeah, that's the idea. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, Luca. Thank you. So yeah, yeah we, can, we can we can stop it here. Stop it here. It's, it's been great. great. Um, Thank you, everyone, for, for being part of this. And thank you, Max. We're going to keep talking about this. Um, Let's do it. The, the org ID idea to, to bring it as soon as possible to, to everybody. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.